Good evening and salutations, my Days of Our Lives fans. So, um, well, let's start off with Sarah and Xander. Sarah pretty much told Xander the truth, um, about the whole fake affair with Brady, everything like that. And, you know, to be honest, it's not like Xander didn't, you know, he didn't see that coming, you know, like he, he didn't know that they were faking it. And, you know, Xander was like, you know, let's not understand what you did. You know, I pretty much did you dirty. Um, so I pretty much expect no less. Now, again, I've been on the fence about this whole redeeming Xander. Because what I felt like what he did was unforgivable. And somebody pointed out that somebody else forgave, um, that Sarah forgave somebody else for their part. And the whole um, baby swapping, um, embryo stealing kind of thing. Like, she forgave them. So, I guess if she forgave them, then... I guess, you know? Like, I guess. I, it, it makes sense for, for her to forgive um, Xander from a logical point of view. I personally think what he did was unforgivable. But, whatever. Um, anyway... You know, Sarah pretty much was said that, you know, the reason why we're good is because of the whole headstone that you gave my daughter. And so, you know, Xander is just playing it up, just being nice and being like, hey, listen, I give you space. You know, he does that whole thing where he'll give you a little bit and then he'll sit there and back off. And then he'll make that person think. You know, he'll walk away and let and let that person decide um, if they're going to take him back. It's going to be because of them and not be because um, of his badgering. Um, anyway, he took, you know, he helped her. He was like, you know, listen, why don't you, why don't you go back to your parents' place? Because apparently Xander lives there. But he was like, you know what, listen, I'll move out. You can just hang out with your mom or whatever and I'll do my own thing. So he helped her back, um, you know, he ha had a bag or whatever packed, um, actually to tell you the truth, she had a um, bag packed because she was staying at a hotel that apparently she couldn't afford anymore, which is kind of odd because I'm pretty sure, doesn't she come from money? Like, her mom lives in a mansion, her dad might be Victor, I'm assuming, or stepdad or whatever, like, she has money, I don't understand why... She couldn't pay for that hotel. I don't... I know that doctors... I don't know. Anyway, um... So she decided to move back in with her mom. Dana helped her. Um, Sarah looked at, I guess, this wedding dress that she was gonna have when she was gonna marry Xander. And then they stand each other and then they, they... They do that gaze and that pretty much ends that. Um... Not really much, except for the fact that um, pretty much Sarah, in a lot of ways, forgiven Xander. Um, and then they hashed everything out. And, you know, Sarah told him the truth about the whole fake affair. So, yeah. Uh, let's talk about this really odd scene. With Nicole and Lucas... And Eric. So apparently Nicole took Luca's phone and put in her shirt. So now they're running around. They're on a couch. They're like wrestling for her, wrestling for his phone. Eric comes in and Eric is just like, um, the hell is going on? Um, he didn't say that, but anyway, both of those two are trying to get Lucas to calm down. Um, now somebody brought it to my, somebody brought to my attention that, you know, Lucas is a concerned father. He just doesn't want Ali to make the same mistakes that Sammy made, you know, at her age. So I get, I get the good intentions of where he's coming from, but his execution, to me, besides the fact that it's just annoying, it's much like it's a bit it's 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 a lot you know it's too damn much honestly um 
because he's he's coming from a point of he wants to sit there and try to control her and tell her what to do and this that and the third so he's sitting up there arguing with those two he's sitting up there arguing with eric and nicole talking about how he wants to get sammy involved and she deserves to know and this that and the third and nicole's like listen you keep pushing you're gonna send her away you know nicole was like listen before y'all two got here she was already gonna leave she gets scared like that again she's gonna leave and we're not gonna be able to find her and that's the last thing that he wants for his daughter to be out there in the world alone and pregnant that's not what he wants so after arguing for a good five minutes um lucas comes to some sort of rationalization you know he's like all right now listen i've been kind of handling this poor i'm like bro you've been handling this more than poor but okay sure um so he finally is like you know what listen i'm not gonna tell sammy right now i don't want to add any more stress to an already stressful situation so he's like you know what i'm not gonna do that so he calls um ali ali doesn't pick up now ali is over there with sunny and will and here's a couple of things that kind of bothered me even though i don't know the full backstory now i say that and i say i don't know the full backstory so you got will and sunny that's not there talking to ali about being a parent being responsible and just kind of sharing their experiences that they have with, you know that they have so far with Ari and Gabby and just the whole stress of trying to shield her from all this sort of stuff and how everyone's that they're trying to do their part to make sure that Ari's okay now Will asks you know he's like so should I bother to ask about the father and Ali's like no now again I'm going to sit there and say this without knowing the backstory. The thing that kind of irritated me again, and I'm going to say this, is that she is acting as though the father has no rights. Like, his say-so just isn't important. And I get it. It's a woman's body. You're the one that's not there giving birth to this child. And you have, you know, it's, it's in your body. But the thing is, it's not fully your child. And without him... You wouldn't actually have a belly like that. But again, I don't know the full situation. Is this guy a creep? Is he a killer? You know, she's not really saying much, which is kind of annoying. Um. Anyway, that was listening to say. Anyway, um, I think Sonny was gonna sit there and tell our um. Ali about them adopting and Will was like no um cause when our, our Ali left Will was like you know what listen she has enough stress trying to decide what she's gonna do and basically towards the end of the conversation when Ali comes back Will was like listen you need to decide on the best way you're gonna handle being a single mother you know, what's going to be best for the child. And I think that's when um, Ali says, you know, she has an idea. And she she runs into Lucas. And at first it's like, eh, I don't want to talk to you. Because remember, she hung up, well, I don't know. She hung up the phone when um, Lucas called. But then Lucas told her, you know, listen, I'm not going to involve Sammy right now. Until you decide what you want to do with the baby. And Ali was like, you know what, listen, I decided. I'm not going to raise this child. And that's when Lucas just had that look on the face like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> he was just like, I'm sorry, what? That was the look on his face. Um, So I guess we're going to go back into the whole over-controlling, overbearing, I'm telling you what to do, Lucas. So, yay. Um... And then this weird scene happened. And I, I really gotta sit there and talk about this. So after, you know, Lucas left um, Eric and Nicole's place. Let me get a drink. (laughs) 
Eric is like, so what was that whole thing in the beginning? You know, that was so kind of weird about him trying to take, you know, the phone out of your shirt. What what was that about? And then, um, Nicole's like, oh, what are you, what are you jealous? And Eric was just like, no, that looks exciting. And I'm like, okay. For argument's sake, we're just going to sit there and pretend that he really said, nah, that actually looked kind of hot. Apparently that didn't bother him, and I was actually a little kind of surprised because I thought that's where it was going to go, but apparently he was like, nope, that works for me, and then they went in the room and played mattress tag, so uh, that happened. Uh, let's, let's talk about one of my favorite scenes. Brady and Victor. The reason I'm talking about Brady and Victor, and why it's my favorite scene, it's because Brady is not there trying to play people like they're stupid. And I just don't understand. Now, I said a couple of weeks back, when I started watching this, when I found out about Brady's plan, I was like, this is a really stupid plan. I don't remember which video I said, it, but I'm pretty sure I said something along the lines, this is a really stupid plan. You're going to purposely sink the company and no one's going to no one's going to suspect that it's you. You know, like, really. So anyway, um, Victor's like, so, um, he pretty much like, what the hell have you been doing? You know, you plan on, you plan on, uh, plan on getting revenge on me, you plan on taking my company? And at first, Brady's like, oh, well, did Serena tell you? Did Serena run to granddaddy? Did Serena run to her granddad and, and tell, tell her about my big bag plan? Anyway, listen. I, I, that wasn't me. Um, she was just upset that I didn't sit there and, and give her a pound a head. You know? So, it, it's nothing. That's just her and her imagination. Pretty much. And Victor's like, the hell are you talking about? I didn't even talk to her. And I was like, see, you're trying to play this guy. He, he's... You're trying to play a guy that has years of experience on you and lying to people and doing God knows what and you honestly think you're going to sit there and pull a fast one over him. I haven't even watched this show that long and I can already tell that the minute you start trying to lie to him nothing about that shit was going to work. And so Victor was like listen, I get it. You want to sit there and get revenge on me and you got revenge on Xander and apparently that wasn't enough for you. You want to take down the company, this isn't going to work. So, we're going to have to sit there and come to some sort of, um, some sort of arrangement. Um, you know, Brady sits in and talk about how he missed Kristen and his daughter and wondering if they're okay and if they're safe. And Victor's like, all right, listen, you know, I can do something for you, just name it. And Brady's like, okay, cool. I got you. Let's kind of skip ahead. Let's kind of skip a little bit to, um, because this is going to kind of fall. Actually, tell you the truth. It's pretty much just Lonnie and Eli, um, talking about the trial. If they're going to get called to testify against Gabby and Gabby's this and that and the third. And then it really goes nowhere because they just want to play mattress tag. So while they're in the bed, I guess getting ready for round four or something, um, Eli gets a call from Brady, and Brady's like, listen, you need to come down here, um, just come down here, we gotta talk. So after, um, you know, Eli, like, eh, I don't know, whatever, alright, fine, damn it, I'll do it. And by the way, before, before he actually goes down there, apparently, this is something that I just learned, um, Lonnie actually helped Kristen escape. She, like, broke the damn law, and just helped her escape. And then Eli just covered it up. Okay. Um, I guess they got some dirt on their fingers too. Wow. Uh, so anyway, Eli goes to um, Brady's house. No, goes to Victor's Victor's place um, at Titans. And um, anyway, he gets there and he's like, all right, listen, what is it that you got to say? And Victor's like, remember when I told you that Kristen stabbed me in your heart? Yeah, I lied. 
And uh, Eli just kind of stands there and he's just like... And I couldn't tell, I couldn't tell if he just didn't believe him or if he's just like, the hell was going on? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section if he really did, if um, Kristen really did stab, um, stab Victor in the heart. I gotta sit there and say, the thing that I am starting to appreciate this show, in particular, Victor's character, is that he's not entirely the devil incarnate. You know, he has his, clearly he has his, his, his dirt and shit that he does. But he has his good sides too, you know. Um, apparently he, you know, spent time with his granddaughter and he has tea time with her and stuff. And, like, he's not this all-purpose bad, bad guy like some of the people that are on General Hospital that are just strictly evil. Like Elena or no. So I do like the fact that people are very complex in the show. And, um... Oh, and towards the end, apparently, um, what the hell is the name? Lonnie was sitting at some sort of, um, cafe or whatever, talking to a baby about the different food that she wants to eat, and then somebody is, um, looking at her from the bushes. And that's it. That's pretty much the end of the soap opera. That's actually pretty much the end of the show. Um, like I said, um, I felt like a lot didn't happen. Like, right away, but stuff did happen, if that makes any sense. Um, I don't know. It was a good episode. Um, I didn't really actually have any too, too much of any faults. I mean, I could have... If I had to sit there and say one, one, a couple of scenes were skippable, I would sit there and say Eli and Lonnie. Because they didn't really add anything into the show, and I felt like... Brady could have just called Eli there. He could have just been there for the last couple of minutes. And his screen time with Lonnie was really unnecessary. How I actually tell you the truth. The only thing I actually I liked about it was that. You know I found out more about um, Lonnie actually helping Kristen escape. Other than that. Her scene was totally useless. Was pointless. If I had known about this and I was an avid watcher from the beginning. I would have been like this is. Completely pointless. So yeah, that's actually going to do it for this recap of Days of Our Lives. Thank you for watching. Sorry, yes, I, I know my review came out kind of late. Um, I'm actually going to kind of call it more of a review than a recap. Because even though I am recapping a lot of the stuff that's going on, um, I'm also reviewing it from my point of view as far as like what I liked and what I didn't like. And technically, I guess that's a review. So we're going to go with that. So... Um, my titles are going to actually be reviews until I decide to change it. But for right now, my titles, my titles are actually going to um, be reviews. Um, so thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Also, happy birthday to True Wayne. True Wayne, happy birthday. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Be safe, marry, all that good stuff. And I will catch you in the next video. And if you change the name from Truane, then you know who I'm snipped to talking to. And happy birthday to you.